Welcome back, fight fans. Welcome back. Let's just dig right into it. And these are the top five cherry pickers as of right now. So we'll start with number one on our list, Jamal Charlo. He has no elite, you know, has no elite fighters on his resume, has no step up fights, you know, at 160 pounds. He's not fought any of the top fighters. He's not even looking to fight any of the best. His name is Jamal Tune-Up Charlo because he's a tune-up fighter for Canelo Alvarez, and he only fights tune-up level fighters himself. Jamal Tune-Up Charlo, you know, has the potential to be a good fighter, has the potential to, to break out of his shell, but we'll never know. Uh, his most recent fight uh, was against a Matt Koroboff in which he looked lackluster at best and he needed to rematch that to set that right and he has not done that he is not looking to rematch matt korboff but yet he's constantly calling out triple g canelo alvarez and it's clear that the only thing he wants is a payday but i can't even take him seriously as even wanting to fight these guys for the simple fact that at the end of the day he's not with the zone he's not made any offers to move over to the zone jamal tune up charlo is a top notch cherry picker and then we have number two on the list we're going to just keep it going Gervonta Tank Davis he's fought no elite opponents he keeps fighting guys you know moving up in weight he's basically a small weight bully if you have you know Gervonta Tank Davis is ducking all the top level fighters in and around his weight class he's looking for the easiest tune-ups touch-up fights he can have and you know he's guided by Al Heyman the PBC and Mayweather's promotion and you know at the end of the day all these guys are duckers cherry pickers and and that's what they're promoting with Gervonta Tank Davis. Uh, number three on the list has to be Errol Spence Jr. And, you know, Errol Spence Jr. was ducked by a lot of different fighters, but he has cherry-picked a lot of fights. And, you know, and people say that Mikey Garcia, oh, you know, Mikey Garcia called him out. Mikey Garcia called him out. Yes, he did. But Errol Spence Jr. accepted. Errol Spence Jr. didn't have to accept Mikey Garcia fight because at the end of the day, he could have fought Terrence Crawford. At the end of the day, Errol Spence Jr. had options available different than Mikey Garcia. He chose to fight a guy moving up two weight classes for a payday. That's what he did. Mikey Garcia doesn't have a belt. Mikey Garcia was his opportunity to get a quick cash, a big check, and that's all it was. And at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, the fact that Errol Spence Jr. accepted the fight, it counts as a cherry pick regardless if Mikey called him out. Because you have to look at it like this. Errol Spence Jr. says that he's the A-side, right? He says he dictates terms whether him and Crawford fight. So at the end of the day, if you're the A-side and it's always up to you to make the decision on making the fight, then you, in essence, cherry picked Mikey Garcia because you didn't have to take the fight you're the A side you could have took another fight you took you could have took anybody else let's say Porter didn't want to fight you Garcia didn't want to fight you or Thurman didn't want to fight you you could have fought Terrence Bud Crawford and you chose not to that is a cherry pick fight the fact that Errol Spence Jr. stated openly and honestly that he wanted to face the easy road and does not want to face Crawford right away why wouldn't I take the easy road that's his direct quote and so at the end of the day, if he's taking the easy road and he's not facing Crawford next, like he stated, and he wants to face a Sean Porter because it's a lighter touch and easier touch for him, then Errol Smith Jr. has to be the cherry pick at number three. At number four, you have Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, for facing a guy like Steve Rolls, for facing guys like Vinas Matarosian. And yes, we understand that Triple G, you know, he has fought elite level type of opponents, Canelo Alvarez, Danny Jacobs. We give him credit and props for that. Triple G has earned the stripes of a top level fighter, but at the same time, Triple G has cherry picked quite a bit. And, and it's not like he got, you know, guys that were just basic tune ups, he got guys that were all the way at the bottom of the list, which makes him a cherry picker at number four. Uh, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury come in at number five. They share that spot. They're tied together because both of these guys love to cherry pick guys who are already done. You know, um, everyone from Eric Molina to Arthur Spilka to at the same time, you know, you, you see these guys, Bermain Stravern in a rematch. Like, who cares about that? These fighters are bums. And then you see, you know, Tyson Fury fighting Tom Schwartz. Uh, the bum of them all at the end of the day these guys are cherry pickers and we have to be honest and unbiased once again it's the ibfp please share like and you must absolutely subscribe